Welcome to part two of our three-part blog series on analysing your game's data in R. Um, so today we're going to look at doing plots in R. Uh, plots are, I think, where R really comes into its own. It's one of the most powerful features of R, and I don't really think there's many other software packages out there that have got the same flexibility of plotting and a uh, range of options. Uh, so. I'm if you're watching this, I'm assuming that you've either watched the first video about dplyr um, or that you already know about dplyr. Um, so like the last video where I talked about manipulating data in R, uh, but I didn't use very much of base R, I used the package dplyr. Um, similar thing here, I'm not going to be using uh, R's built-in plotting capabilities, I'm going to be using the ggplot2 library, which is initially seems a little bit more complicated than using the base functionality but overall it makes things much easier. <laughs> okay so start I'm gonna load a few libraries um need this for getting our database data dplyr that we used last time and the new library we're going to use ggplot2. If you haven't got that library haven't used that library before you'll need to install it first so go to install.packages and ggplot2. Okay, um, right, I'm going to use direct access and I'm going to use uh, the Delta Crunch demo as an example of data. Uh, you can do this with your own data if you have access to direct access or you can download a CSV from a website which will give a similar set of data. So I'm going to load this all in just the same as last time. Uh, well, a slightly different data set though, so let's have a look at the query and we can see the data set that I've pulled out. Um, so you'll notice here we're grouping by user ID in the SQL query. So we're just taking, we're looking at your live events and we are um, finding a little bit of information for each user. Uh, so we're looking at their ID, when they were last seen, and what their gender is, what their age group is, what the highest level they've got to so far is, and when they started. Um, so we could have a look at that here. Let's view data uh, that's loaded into R. Right, as I said, user ID, when they were last seen, gender, age group, level, start date. Okay. Okay, so unfortunately, before we can get into making some plots, we're going to have to talk about using um, about using dates, times and dates in R. And so, once again, you can do this using R's built-in functionality, but as always, I recommend using a package designed for this. I always use the loop date package. Same deal, install it if you need to. If you don't need to install it, I don't need to install it load into your workspace. Um, so we're going to use two functions from Lubridate. We're going to use this here, which finds the difference between two dates. And then we're going to use this here, which, so once we find the difference between the two dates, then uh, we find the number of days in that difference. It's sort of a modular division by one day. So it might be like four days and two hours, and this will just give us four days. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we're kind of, we want to do that because we're interested in how long people have been playing for. Because you saw we got their time they were last seen and the time that they started. So from that we can work out how many days they've had this game for. Let's run all this. Okay. Lubridate is very good, but it does tend to take a bit longer than other ways of doing this. You also note that we've um, used a negative select to say we don't need the date difference. So it was only like a temporary variable so that we could work out uh, the difference between two dates. Okay, and let's have a look at the data again. Let's see if this has worked. View data. Right. Seen. Looks good. Check the first one. 
Yep, last scene started on that day, so it's not been for any days. Yep, looks fine to me, doesn't it? Okay, interesting. Um. Okay, so we've got we've got all the data we want. We're going to be looking at how long people play versus what level they get to. So there's lots of reasons you might want to do this. You might you really you're wanting to check um, is your game balanced well. And you might see that one level takes a really really long time for people to get through, which indicate the game isn't balanced well. Or you might see that it takes a while to get through the first levels, and then the later levels are really easy. Which you know it's up to you, but that may not be the way you want your game to be structured. So, um. And plots are a really good way of like just getting good on understanding of what the data is doing. Okay, so now this is the first time we've looked at gplot. I'm just going to run this whole thing so you can see what it gives you. Then I'm going to talk through all the parts. There we go. So it's a scatter plot of the number of days people have been playing for versus the level they reach. And you can see that the longer they play, the higher the level they reach. And there's some variation around this trend, but most people seem to be progressing at similar, a similar-ish speed. Okay, quite interesting. Um, now if you do this for your own game data, I doubt you'll see anything that looks quite as clean as this. Um, this, I mean, the Delta Crunch data is uh, made up data, and so everything works a bit better, but, you know, have a look at your own data, see what you see. Okay. And I said I'd talk you through how this plot's put together. So the first function, ggplot, that basically, you always start with ggplot and you tell it what data you want to plot. And you always put in a data frame. So ggplot always works with data frames and it knows the names of the variables in the data frame. So you do it on your own, nothing happens. There's no layers to plot, we're going to put layers in a minute. Okay. So we're telling it we're going to plot this data, and then we're going to use AES. So AES means stands for aesthetics, and what this is saying, the aesthetics are the parts of the plot which depend on data. There's going to be parts of the plot which are fixed, and there's going to be parts of the plot which depend on the data. And obviously since you're trying to plot data, the part of the plots that depend on data are important. So here, so all the points depended on the data, right? And the x position of the point and the y position of the point depended on the day scene or the level scene for each user. Um, so that's what's going on there. And finally, you add this layer. So I mean, try run both of these. Won't like that, that won't work. Still no layers. We're going to add a point layer. And so ggplot works by you can add on lots of different layers, you can build up really complicated plots. Um, and the ones we're doing this now will just have the one layer. So, once again, that's just telling that we want to plot this this data from this data frame, and we want to plot it as points. So let's have a look at that, but let's use a different geom. Let's plot this data as lines. Okay, one change. Geom, geom line instead of geom point, and we get a line graph instead, which probably isn't the right um, geom to use in this situation. So you need to know what kind of plot you want to make and what geoms are appropriate. Okay, let's go back to the scatter graph we had. That looked fine, didn't it? There we go. There it is. But um, let's add some color. And let's add some transparency. So you'll notice that we put colour and transparency in at this point. We put it in the geom point. So it's only applying to the points. And if we add a different layer, it wouldn't apply to that layer. Um, also, you know how I was saying some variables are aesthetics, they depend on the data. And some variables are fixed and they don't depend on the data. So th these are examples of variables that are fixed and don't depend on the data. We are saying all the points will have this colour and all the points will have this transparency. Alpha is uh, 
the word used in ggplot for transparency. So let's run this, let's see what it looks like. Okay, so all our plots have been coloured pink and they're also slightly transparent, which is quite interesting because you can see there's clearly a lot more points at the bottom here than there is at the top. Transparency on these types of graphs is always really useful. Okay, so now we're going to use colour. Colour is one of those variables which can be either used as an aesthetic or it can be used as a fixed value. So here we saw it as a fixed value, now let's see it as an aesthetic. So it's going into the aesthetic section and we're linking it to a part of the data, which was gender. Let's see what happens when we plot this. Okay, so now the plot points are coloured depending on what gender the user is. Which is interesting because we're maybe seeing a bit of a pattern here. It looks like, particularly up here, that females tend to get to higher levels than males. Okay. Um. So that's actually most of the important parts of ggplot covered. Um, different geoms, you know. Go look up a reference, find all the different geoms, adding aesthetics and how elements can be fixed or they can be dependent on the data. Um, but we're going, we're basically going to, I'm going to show you a few more features that ggplot has, but this is really the core of the features. And we're also going to just go look at some more examples because it's always good to see more examples of how these things work. Um, the last feature I want to show you is faceting. Um, cause, so remember we had gender and we had age group for all our users. We've looked at gender. Let's see if the like the level and the day scene gender, uh, let's see if they've changed with age group as well as the gender. And a good way of doing that is to facet it. So facet just means we're going to make many plots. It's probably easiest just to run it and you can see it. Right, so now we've got a new plot for each age group. And it's really easy, we just add it on facet grid. Okay. So first interesting thing is that all the unknown gender are also of unknown age group. I'm just going to pull this out a little bit so you can see it more. Um, and have a look at that and have a think about whether you think this trend is changing with different age groups. I would say I think it looks pretty similar, all the age groups. Doesn't matter what age group you're getting to a similar level at a similar point. But we're going to look into that more later. Okay. Um, right. Um, so let's think about where um, now we're going to see a few different geoms and we're also going to see how ggplot handles different types of data. And you'll just see lots more examples of ggplot in action. So let's, this day scene, um, we kind of noticed that it seems like a lot of people play for not a long time and then there's a long tail of people who are playing for a little bit. So let's make a histogram to get that, um, so we can be sure about that. Um, so there's only one variable needed for a histogram, it's just the number of days seen. And geom bar will take that and knows what to do knows how to make it to histogram. So yes, as we suspected, a lot of people play for a very short amount of time and then a small number of people play for a long time. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, that's quite interesting, but I kind of want to get into a bit more detail about that. How many people are playing for only one day and how many people are playing for more than a hundred days? Um, so the way we want to do that is we want to change days seen into a factor. So just now it's a numeric value, but um, we want to put those numeric values into groups. And we do that using the cut function. So this is all just dplyr, we're using mutate to make a new variable. Um, and we want to use the cut function. So if, I haven't, if you don't know this, this is very useful. Um, to get up the help, just put question mark and the name of the function you want to know about. So what is happening with cut? Not cut interval. Cut. <laughs> I 
Okay. Um, so, cut defines the range of accent intervals and codes of i's and x according to in which interval they fall. So x will be our variable they seen, and the breaks will be our definition of the intervals. So I'm saying first interval, there shouldn't be anything negative, but basically I'm putting that in to make sure it captures everything. Anything that is under or equal to zero, aka just zero. Anything greater than zero to five, five to ten, ten to a hundred, a hundred to five hundred. Uh, there wasn't any people who played for more than 500 days, so that is capturing everyone. Let's run this. Okay, and let's have a look at the... Let's have a look at our data again. Let's see this new day scene group. Okay. Yep, so these people have been seen for no days, so they're in this group here. And these people have been seen for 80 days, so they're in the 10 to 100 group. Looks fine. Okay. And now let's do exactly the same plot as we did up here. We did day scene, which was a numeric um, variable. Let's do it for day scene group, which is a factor variable. So it's okay. So it's made a different type of plot, and it because it knows the difference between factors and numerics. So. It, this is a bar plot, not a histogram. A histogram, just go back, um, has got no spaces between the values and it had to make a decision about which groups to cut in and it did that. Here it knows which groups and it puts spaces between the bars. Okay, so that's quite interesting. Seems there's a lot of people who've played for zero days. Um, but also a lot, quite even more people who've played for more than 10 days but less than 100 days. So it seems people are playing this game for quite a long time. Let's let's see if there's any difference in gender. So we had some indication in the plots before that males and females might be playing for different amounts of times or might be getting to different amounts of levels. Um, let's have a look at that. So I'm going to start by doing some dplyr to filter out all players of unknown gender. Uh, basically uh, because um, I don't know the unknowns. They looked they looked a bit suspicious to me because a lot of people were had unknown gender and unknown age group, and they're all you know at a similar part of the scatter plot. So I don't really trust those. So let's just take them out. Um, so we pipe that straight into the GG plot function. Our aesthetics are going to be day scene group. We're going to add a different aesthetic. Uh, for fill, for gender. So let's see what happens when we run this. We're going to, so the values that depend on the data will be the bar heights, which will depend on how long people have been seen for, and the fill of the bar, which depends on the gender. Okay, so there you go, you've got a static bar graph. Bar graph, easy peasy. And the fill corresponds to which gender people are. Okay, so, I mean, I'm looking at that and it's kind of hard to say anything, isn't it? Maybe there's more males in this group, but I don't know, but it could just be because that bar is bigger in general. Let's do grouped bars instead. So this will be exactly the same. This is exactly the same as we did before. One difference. So here we just have geom bar, and here we have geom bar position equals dodge. Okay? So Position is one of those things, like colour or aesthetic, that we can change in a layer. And let's see when we change the position. Here we go, we get grouped bars. So that's quite interesting. Oh, well, see, in this group here, we're seeing a lot more females than males. And this group, at the end, there's even there's an even greater uh, overpopulation of females. Okay, and. Let's go look into age groups some. Uh, same same cleaning, moving unknowns. Let's fill by age group though. Okay, so rainbow colours. What's this mean? You can see different age groups. Um 
correspond to each colour. But, I mean, it's, for, again, it's hard from, I find that quite hard to get any conclusion out of it. I guess what we're really interested in is is the proportion of users in each of these amounts of time people have spent playing, is the proportion of users in different age groups any different? So is there a lot more 13 to 70 year olds in this group, for example, compared to their average proportion? We can do that with position equals fill. So again, it's exactly the same as we did here. It's one change. Position in our geom bar is going to be set to fill. Okay, so all that's doing is um, all the bars are going to have the same height now. We've all got a height of one. And you can compare the proportions within each bar. And, I mean, that looks to me like the proportion of users in each age group is pretty much staying the same in each of our day scene group. I mean, maybe this one here, it's got a slightly, mm, slightly lower proportion of 25 to 29 year olds. Don't know, I'd say that's probably the same. So, we've seen scatter plots and we've seen um, bar plots. Uh, let's look at another type of plot. Let's look at heat plots. Heat plots. Um, so, there's uh, a lot of different types of plot you can do in ggplot2, and I'm not going to even begin to show you them all. But I've shown you two very useful ones. I really want to do this example to kind of show you um, how to make more complicated graphs. So we're going to do a bit and we're going to change the we're going to change the theme, we're going to change the title, we're going to change what everything's called. So okay so if you I'm going to actually just run all this because you might not know what heat plot is and I think it'll make a lot more sense if you see a heat plot. Right. So basically heat plot different squares coloured according to some external variable and people are falling into groups so you can sort of see the interaction between people's ages and their genders. Okay, let's wind back. Okay, to do this you need to prepare the data a bit. And this is dplyr, hopefully this will make sense if you've seen it so I'm going to go, if you've seen dplyr so I'm going to talk through it quite quickly. Right, one um, one big problem when you're analysing game data is that you want to know when people leave the game or what's the final level they get to, but there's a lot of people who are still playing the game who haven't finished yet and they're going to get to higher levels. So it's a good idea to remove anyone uh, who's played recently because they're still actively playing the game. You only want to see people who've played the game and they're not going to play it anymore. Uh, we're removing those unknown genders and unknown age group observations because I don't trust them. Um, we're going to group by gender and age group and we're going to find the average level that people get to. So let's just um, run that and let's have a look at what that looks like. So I've made that. That's in a variable called plot data. Yep, and that's you can see that that is the same information that was contained in that plot. It's all the combinations of gender and age group, and the average level that they get to. Um, put you back at the plot again. Okay. I think this. Looking at this, it's immediately obvious that males get on to a lower level on average. And that it's also quite apparent that it doesn't really matter, age group doesn't really affect the level you get to. This, mm, not so obvious. Maybe because it is quite a stark difference. So, right, so that's that's the basic heat plot. You use geom raster. That's the heat plot function. Um, our variables that depend on the data are gender. So x and y depends on where your block goes where these little squares are, depend on the uh, gender and the age group, and the colour, the fill, depends on the average level. Uh, but there's, let's clean this up a bit. Um, so one, one big advantage of having the data in a table compared to having it in a heat plot is that you can actually read off the numbers if you want to. So we're going to stick the numbers on top of each of the squares. 
um, but these numbers we'll want to round them to one decimal place. So all we're doing is we're taking that that number and rounding it to one decimal place, and we're changing it into a character because uh, you need to have a character to plot it on the put it on the plot. Now we can look at plot data again. Plot data. Yep. Yeah. So now we've got an extra variable which is the label which is rounded nicely to one decimal place and is a character. Okay. So um, I also want to change the colour scheme. That colour scheme is fine, uh, but uh, our colour bluer has got some really nice colour schemes in there. Depending on what you want to do, you can select different types of colour scheme. I think it's pretty good. So again, install it if you haven't installed it. Load it in once you've installed it. Okay, so let's talk through this. What's going on here? We started out exactly the same. This is exactly the same as that. And we've added an extra layer on. So let's just run up to here because that's just the same. Check, yes, that's exactly the same. And then we're going to add on another layer. And this layer will be a text layer. And since the text layer, both of these layers look at the aesthetic. Uh, function to get how to do what they want to do. So raster needs jet needs x, y, and fill, and text needs label. If you want your aesthetic function to only apply to one layer, then you need to place it inside the layer function. But here, you know, there's no conflict between the aesthetics we want for raster and the aesthetics we want for text. So GeomText knows that the labels will be in the function call will be in the variable called label. And it knows the colour is going to be white. And we're telling it these are fixed values, the colour is white and the size is eight. So let's see what happens when we do that. Okay, so all it's done is put plot it on top of that. On top of GeoMaster. It's put text with the labels that we made earlier. Um Another thing to notice, if we put those the other way around, let's actually just see what happens when we do that. ggplot knows about the order you've put things in. So, we've put text first, then we've put the raster layer on. Let's see what happens. Oh, let's just actually make a point, let's just run up to here. Right, you can't see the text because this layer got plotted on top of that layer. Okay, there we go, back to what we had before. So keep that in mind when you're putting layers, that the layer you put last will be the top layer. Okay, scale fill distiller is a function that comes from the, the R color brewer package, and that will just change the uh, color scheme used. Uh, we're also going to name this uh, fill, uh, so he, that will change this label here. Um, we're going to call the type of palette we want to use is a di diverging one, which will highlight the differences between male and female, but you could try other types. We'll try them in a minute. And the palette we want to use is palette number three. I just chose that one. I like that one. Uh, you can try other palettes. Um, since this is going to be the label for the scale, then I've put new lines in. So that, yo, let's run it. You can see that it will uh, line up nicely. Okay, so new color scheme. Average space, final space level. That's what the slash ends do. Um, do you want to try, try a different type of color scheme? This is sequential. Okay, interesting. Um, let's go back to diverging. We can do different palettes within diverging. So let's try the first palette. Okay. So we'll always play around with those. They've got some nice palettes in there. And finally, all I'm doing is changing the X label and the Y label. Because um, if you're showing some of this plot, you might not want to have them the, you know, I want to have the labels the same as the variables are called. So I'm calling the X label, sorry, here's the X label, calling it age group. 
and I'm putting a I'm putting a new line at the start as well, so it pushes it down a little bit. I'm calling this one gender. Okay, see so if I miss out that new line at the start, age group would be a little bit squished up, um, which might not be what you want. I prefer it like this. Okay, and the last thing I'm doing is I'm adding theme black and white. So this is you can't really see it in this plot. Um, you want. But themes basically just change the whole way that the uh, graphs look. So you can see the background is now black and white, and that would make a bigger difference on things like scatter plots. You can look up the GG themes package to see lots of different themes that you could use. Uh, so yeah, so I think that looks pretty okay. Uh, you might want to play around with it and display the data in a slightly different way. Um, there's GG plots good. Um, for making graphics quickly that I think look pretty good. Um, if you want more control over your graphics, if you want to move particular pixels around, you're not happy with exactly how things are, then it's maybe not the package to use. Um, I use it a lot for just um, exploratory analysis, so just looking at the data, it's the, I think it's the fastest and easiest way of getting the plots that help you understand the data. Um, but it also, I think, gives pretty good presentation worthy graphics. Okay, um, the final part of uh, this blog series is going to be about statistical modelling, which is another great use reason to use R. And we're just going to be looking at linear models, but there's so many types of models to use R. In fact, it's probably the best reason to use R. It's all the different statistical functions. Um, so it's going to be a bit different from the first two uh, blogs, but I recommend you read that, you watch that, or and read it uh, when it comes out. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.